Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Adobe Bridge, available in Photoshop CS2 and later, is command central for Adobe applications. Bridge is a powerful organizational tool that allows you to organize, share, and manage project files, applications, settings, and much more. Adobe Bridge, which is included with Adobe's creative suite of applications, such as Photoshop, Dreamweaver, Flash, Illustrator, lets you easily store, search, preview, and locate both Adobe and non-Adobe files you use in your work. For example, an image that you prepare in Photoshop for viewing on your website can be stored in Bridge, then easily found and accessed when creating the HTML page in Dreamweaver, all using Bridge. You can open Bridge from any Adobe application except Acrobat. Select File, Browse and Bridge from the menu bar, and Bridge will open in its own window. Now you can also quickly go to Bridge by clicking the Launch Bridge button in the Applications bar in versions CS5 or CS4, or at the right end of the Options bar in earlier versions. So we just give that a click, and it will also open Bridge. What we see here is the initial screen when you open Adobe Bridge. If you're used to a typical Windows environment, you'll have some familiar tools available to you. Let's take a few moments to acquaint ourselves with the various parts of the environment and what we can do through those objects. At the top of the program window, we have the title bar, and that shows the BR icon of the application. At the right end, of the title bar we have three buttons that allow us to control the size and shape of the application window. Minimize, Maximize and Restore, and Close. Now remember that when you click those buttons that they control the sizing of the entire application and not just the image file upon which you happen to be working. Below the title bar is the menu bar and that contains commands for performing tasks in Bridge grouped by category. For example, the file command contains all of the necessary commands for file management. You can click on one of the commands in the menu bar to display a drop-down listing of the subcommands that are available to perform. You then click on the command that you want to perform. Some subcommands are followed by a right pointing arrow, such as Open Recent and that indicates that you must make a selection to execute that command. Simply hold your mouse pointer over those commands until you see a side menu appear. Then slide your mouse pointer into the side menu on one of the available command choices and give it a click. Some commands are followed by an ellipsis mark and those commands will then launch a dialog box when clicked into which you must put additional information or make a selection before you can execute that command. For example, if you select Edit and then Find from the menu bar, that will launch the Find dialog box that we see here where you would enter information to help you locate the file you are looking for. In the dialog boxes that do appear, you can click the Cancel button or press the Escape key on your keyboard to cancel the window without making a choice so we'll cancel that. If you're interested in simply becoming a faster user of the Bridge program, then it will help you to memorize the keyboard shortcuts that are available for the various commands in the menu bar. Using the menu bar to begin with also will allow you to view the various keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts are listed to the right of the various commands in the menu bar drop-down menus. For example, if I wanted to view the Find dialog box again, I could press the Control and F keys on my keyboard to make it appear more quickly in the future. Control and F, just like that. Now you can see the keyboard shortcut Control plus F right to the right of the Find command in the menu bar drop-down. Below the menu bar is a shortcuts bar right here which allows you to easily navigate folders by using the navigation arrows by clicking the left and right ones, revealing recent files by clicking that button, 
Switching back to the Photoshop or other Adobe application. Looks like a little boomerang, remember. Get photos from camera, as well as other options that we'll be covering in upcoming lessons. To the right is the workspace switcher bar that allows you to easily switch in and out of the various workspaces right here. And below that, you can see a trail of breadcrumbs right here, which indicates the location of the image that you're working on. Now, in versions prior to CS4, there was the look in drop down menu that contained the same information. You can expand and collapse this list by clicking on the small gray dots to the left of the essentials until your cursor turns into a line with arrows pointing left and right. Then you click and drag to expand or collapse the menu as needed. So I can just click and drag to expand and collapse it. Then just click on the name of the workspace or use the drop down menu at the right end of the list to select the workspace you want. So you can just click on any of those workspaces or use the drop down which is this small downward pointing arrow and select your workspace. Now the main workspace of the bridge application, everything all below that, contains all of the area where we're going to be working and it consists of three panes that contain various panels. These panels can be moved and resized to suit your needs. You can move a panel from one pane to another by clicking on the name of the panel and dragging it to its new desired location. For example, we have our favorites here. We could click and drag that, move it over here if we wanted to, or click and drag it back just as easily. You can also resize the panels by clicking and dragging on any of the panel divider bars changing the size here like that. You can hide or show any of the panels by selecting window from the menu bar right here and then the panel name from the menu bar to check to view it or uncheck it to hide it. I'll check it and uncheck it like that to hide or view it that easily. Now your favorites panel located right here. The favorites panel provides quick and easy access to folders. You can add favorites by clicking and dragging them from the content panel, which is this panel right here, into the favorites panel. So I could click on this image, click and drag it over here to add it, or you can select an image and then select file and add to favorites from the menu bar. Now just as easily you can remove an item from your favorites panel by doing the reverse and selecting file and remove from favorites from the menu bar as well. The folders panel right here displays folder hierarchy for navigation purposes. You click on any folder name and its contents will appear in the content panel display area to the right. So as you click on those It'll display over to the right. And this is where files you choose in the look in menu, favorites, or folder panels are displayed. You can easily change the size of the thumbnails displayed by using the thumbnail preview slider in the bottom right corner of the application. That's located right down here. You just give it a click and slide it to increase or decrease the size of those thumbnails. The filter panel, located right down here, allows you to sort files that are displayed in the content panel. Use the small arrows to collapse or expand your choices, and click on a file type or a keyword listed to filter the display. So for example, on file type, click on that. If I want to filter by DNG images, I can click on that, or Photoshop documents, and so forth. You can also use the Sort By dropdown located under the Workspace Switcher bar to filter by resolution, date created, and many other choices if you want to do that as well. When you select a file by clicking on it in the Content panel, it's displayed for you over in the Preview panel 
up in the upper right hand corner and it provides you with an image bigger than the thumbnail. In addition, information regarding that file is displayed in what's called the metadata panel down here. See that? And that includes the file name, the document size, the resolution, etc. Now, if you have more than one image selected, only data shared by the selected images will be displayed. The Keywords panel, located here, will display any keywords you have attached to your file, which can also help with organization. For example, you may wish to attach the keyword wedding to images from that event, which can then easily be filtered on and located later. You can navigate through files on your computer using the navigation controls just below the menu bar. Remember, those are up here. Now, switching in and out of workspaces is easy. You simply click on the workspaces of your choice, as I showed you before, up here in the switcher bar, like that. And after rearranging your workspace to your liking, you can save your customized workspace by selecting Window, and then Workspace, and then New Workspace from the menu bar. This will launch the New Workspace dialog box that we see here. And in this, you, of course, select a name. We'll just call this David for right now. And we'll select Save. So, after you've done that, when you're done and you've clicked Save, your new space will be listed as a selection up here in the switcher bar. You'll see that right there. You can also choose one of the pre-configured workspaces that come with the Bridge application if you prefer by selecting those from the workspace menu. If you wish to revert back to the default workspace, select Window, Workspace, Reset to Default Workspace from the menu bar. So Window, Workspace, and you can of course Reset Workspace there. Now it's important to keep your files organized so that you can easily locate them when you need to. Bridge gives you an easy way to keep your images organized by using collections. Once you get your images into Bridge, you can group them into collections stored in the collections panel down here. To create a new collection and add images to it in Bridge, click on the new collection button at the bottom of the collections panel and type a name in the text box. So down here we've got a couple of buttons. We have New Collection and New Smart Collection, which we'll look at shortly. Click on New Collection, and it's asking me, do I want to include selected files in this new collection? We're going to select No, because we have an image selected. So then we're going to, in the text box, click a name that we choose. We'll just call this images for now and click enter. When you click on that collection in the future, any images assigned to it will be displayed. Well, how do we add images to it? To add images, you simply click and drag images from the content panel onto that collection name. So, for example, if we wanted to go back here into samples, we could click our ducky image, click and drag, drag it on there, and then when we click on our collection, only those images will be displayed. Now you can create a smart collection, which allows you to select criteria for images to be included instead of having to manually select the images. Smart collections are automatically updated as matching criteria are added to your images. For example, you could have one of your criteria be a certain file type. As you add files of that type, those images will automatically be added to your Smart Collection. So to create a Smart Collection, select the New Smart Collection button, located right here. And in the Smart Collection dialog box, you use the controls to set the parameters of your collection and then click Save. So for example, under Criteria, it might be File name contains and you could enter text you could use the drop down for date created all sorts of different choices 
and then when you're done you click save. What will happen then is after you click save Bridge will scan files meeting the criteria you choose in order to add the images to that collection. When you're done working in Bridge you can return to the Photoshop application or any Adobe application you were in to link to Bridge by selecting file and then return to that application from the menu bar. So click file and then return to Photoshop right here. Now remember the other way to do that is to go back up here and return to Adobe Photoshop which looks like the little boomerang which would take us right back into Photoshop. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.